So on October 5th, 2019, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost has turned 20 years old. It also happens to be the 50th anniversary of Scooby-Doo in general, so happy 50th anniversary. So of course, in celebration of that, Andrew Hayes and I will be reviewing Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Buddy, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to Anniversary Reviews, where I and a special guest will be reviewing a movie and celebration of its anniversary. And this movie that my guest Andrew Hayes and I are going to be reviewing is Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost. I'm actually gonna let Andrew Hayes do the honor of explaining what the plot is. Now, Scooby and the Witch's Ghost, what this one is about, is about, you know, the gang, uh, Mystery Inc., meets a horror writer who's actually voiced by Tim Curry, and he invites them back to his hometown, where they learn that the writer is an ancestor of a witch that is haunting the city, and now they must figure everything out. And the movie does have the voice talents of Scott Inns, Mary Kay Bergman, Frank Welker, B.J. Ward, and Tim Curry, and many others, of course. So, of course, before I review this movie, I'm going to go ahead and let my guest star, Andrew Hayes, review the movie first. So, Andrew, take it away. What is going on, guys? Andrew Hayes here, back for the second year in a row on uh, Tony's channel. Um, you know, last year I, I came on and we together reviewed Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. And, you know, we loved how it turned out and thought it was such a great idea to that we wanted to do it again this year. Because, you know, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, um, you know, is really the sequel. It's the second one. You know, Zombie Island was the first. This is the second one in, you know, the directed dvd Scooby-Doo movies. And, you know, I, you know, for those who remember last year, I gave very high praise to Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. And, you know, had a lot of fun, uh, you know, re-watching that. Because, you know, last year was the 20th anniversary of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. And I loved, you know, re revisiting it and rewatching it. Had such a great time that, you know, I figured Scooby-Doo and Witches Ghost is turning 20 this year. Uh, I haven't seen that one in a while. Now, um, what did I think about it? Let's get right into it with the positives. Um, let me just start off with uh, an obvious positive that, you know, is pretty much very consistent throughout the whole Scooby-Doo property. Shaggy and Scooby uh, are fantastic in this. I mean, that isn't a surprise here. They are the best two characters. They're at least my two favorites, especially Scooby. But I love... Um, like, I don't think Scooby is as great without Shaggy and vice versa. And just them together uh, and their interactions and how they play off each other. And just what they're doing, the hijinks that they get into and the moments that they have are fantastic throughout the whole property. Uh, but in this film in particular, there's um, one scene in particular that I love. They're at a restaurant and they're eating. Because you know how much they love food, so you gotta, they gotta show that. So they're eating and they're eating like more than anyone really should and everybody's in like horror that they're eating this much and that they're able to eat this much and the guy like the restaurant owner so like distraught that he has to wash all these dishes dishes now and i find that funny also you know scooby and shaggy are you know scaredy cats so you know there's witches involved in this one and those are spooky stuff so that are you know there's things that they're getting scared by that they shouldn't really get scared by but yeah no Sh scooby and shaggy Great in this one as normal. Another positive is, um, I'll say the the voice acting. The voice acting, I think, is very solid. Again, like, very consistently great throughout the whole whole property is the, the voice acting. And, you know, in particular, I want to note, note the voice acting because Tim Curry, uh, like I said, plays the writer of, um, the horror writer that uh, is the ancestor to the witch. And, you know, I really, really think he did a great job, kind of, I think was, he was the perfect person to capture, you know, the 
what this character was all about. Kind of had to give off a spooky kind of vibe. And I really enjoyed that. And I think Tim Curry did wonderful with that. And, you know, some, uh, I think Velma is actually pretty solid in this one. I, I thought, you know, Velma had quite a lot to do. And uh, I'll get a little bit more into that later. But uh, another uh, thing that I love uh, about this is, you know, there's the, the side characters called the Hex Girls. Uh, if you're, you know, fans the property, you know what I'm talking about. But basically, they're this band of uh, it's, it's it's a trio of girls that are in a band, and they um, play a pretty important part into the movie. You know, they're a suspect, and maybe they know about the witches. You know, they're spooky, and you know they look like they're into that witchcraft stuff. But um, really, there's the best part about the movie, and my favorite part about the movie is there's a musical number. Um, when you get introduced to the X girls you know, it's a banger of a song. Um, it, it slaps hard, and I really love it. And they do play a song at the end, which is another fantastic song. So I think they're easily uh, one of the best parts about the movie and give two fan like really, really great uh, songs. And um, another positive is, the st for the most part, the story. Um, which, you know, I'll get a little bit to more now, uh, cause I do have some negatives with this. You know, this isn't a perfect movie like Zombie Island. This does have some problems. I don't really think this holds up all that well. A big problem that I have is that a lot of this movie feels rushed. Like, I looked up the, uh, the runtime for Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, and that is an hour and 17 minutes, roughly. And I thought, you know, that was the perfect length for a Scooby-Doo movie. They gave out enough time to really flush out the, the, the main characters because they were doing their thing. Um, and then the side characters. And there was a big mystery in that one. And I think what they did is they flushed out the side characters so well that you really didn't expect, at least for me, what was going to happen, what the final reveal was going to be. But this one, this one is a... Lot short. It's like 10 minutes shorter. I mean, 10 minutes isn't a lot, but for something like this, I feel like it, it could have added so much more. This is about an hour and seven minutes. And I feel like because those 10 minutes aren't there, or maybe even they could have added 15 or 20 more minutes, This a lot of this feels rushed. You know, like they start off like the beginning of the movie, they meet the writer, and then all of a sudden they're at the town, and then all of a sudden they're, they're trying to hunt the witch. And that all happens so fast it never it, it never feels like like kind of earned the storyline because of that because it feels so rushed it never feel it, it that they never really explore the you know mystery enough and everything just feels rushed another thing is a, bi a big problem of mine is you know fred and daphne you know, I did mention Shugans, Gabby, Scooby and Shaggy, of course, have a lot to do in this movie. I mean, they're like the two big characters. And then, you know, Velma has quite a lot to do. But Fred and Daphne are kind of put off to the wayside. They have, like, nothing to do. It feels like they couldn't have... They, they If they weren't in this movie, it wouldn't have made a difference. And that kind of annoys me because they're a big part about Mystery Inc. And I feel like they just wasted the characters in this. And, uh, again, like... Those that extra time I felt like could have given you know Fred and Daphne some stuff. Um, one other big problem that I have is the final reveal. The final reveal I feel like isn't earned. It is very very predictable. And um, you know like with Zombie Island they gave you so many like people that could have been it that, that that it made it surprising when it actually you actually find out what happened. But this they never really. Give you enough options. So it, it was either like, all right, it's A or B. And they went with A and you kind of expected it to be A. And like kind of the reasoning doesn't make sense. Not that it doesn't make sense, but it's it's kind of a reasoning that doesn't make up for the fact of uh, it being predictable. And that just really bothers me. Um, but all in all, um, I, I did enjoy it enough to where uh, I had a good time watching it. It's definitely definitely didn't hold up like I wanted it to, but um, you know I did uh, end up liking it enough. I do think, in my opinion, the positives outweigh the negatives, and in the end, I give Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost a B minus, which is a very positive. Not a very positive, but it's a positive grade for me. Like I said, the positives outweigh the negatives. I do. Uh, 
enjoy the movie still. It doesn't really hold up like I wish it did, but still, nonetheless, I did enjoy it. Thank you for uh, having me back on the channel, uh, Tony, and thank you guys for watching this. But until next time, guys, holler if you hear me. Thank you so much, Andrew, for reviewing Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. So, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost is a movie I remember very vaguely about. I do remember seeing this movie as a kid. And when it comes to my experience with it, I don't remember being one of my favorite Scooby-Doo movies growing up, but I did remember enjoying it, though. I do remember enjoying this movie as a kid. And since it turned 20 years old, it's like, it'd be interesting to revisit it because I revisited Zombie Island after many years of not seeing it and that held up very well for me. And I was hoping Witch's Ghost would be that same thing for me. And I'm sad to say it didn't really hold up for me, honestly. I think <clears throat> Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost is at best a fine movie. It's a perfectly serviceable movie, but... It's definitely not one of the best, especially not like these classic direct-to-DVD Scooby-Doo uh, movies. There's certainly good things about it, though, and of course I'll talk about the good things before I get to my problems with it. I do want to start off by saying that I thought this movie got off to a really, really good start. I actually thought the opening scene of this movie was really funny. It started off as your typical uh, Scooby-Doo mystery, but obviously that was the point, and I thought it was very clever with how they handled it and the gang find out okay who's this person behind the mask and they even do change around the you meddling kids line instead of you meddling kids it was something else i won't spoil what it is in case you haven't seen the movie i'll let you find out what it is for yourself but I did think it was funny that they changed it around the humanly kids line. That was really clever right there. Just everything about that opening scene was a lot of fun. And it was a really strong way to start off this movie. It, it really left a really good first impression for sure. The animation is also really good. I think it's really colorful. I like the detail in the animation. The character designs are really good. The designs of the witch and some of these other creatures. Like I'll give you for example, when we get to the climax you do see a turkey uh which was not expected but yes you get a big giant turkey um and i love the design of that turkey you see pumpkins and all that stuff in the climax and i thought the detail was very good there and the detail in oak haven massachusetts i just thought it was very beautiful i thought location wise character designs wise you know the witch everything really it all looks really nice the voice talents are also really great that really shouldn't be a surprise to say but i do think everyone here does a really great job with their voice work you have scott ends this time voicing both scooby-doo and shaggy because in Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, Scott Ends voiced Scooby, but Billy West actually voiced Shaggy in that one. Billy West couldn't come back for this one, however, because at that time, he was getting ready to get on Futurama, you know, to voice characters like Fry and various other characters on that show. So Billy West wasn't back as Shaggy for this one. Scott Ends ended up, you know, taking both the role of voicing not only just Scooby, who he also voiced in Zombie Island, but also voicing Shaggy. And I have to say that Scott Ends, you know, considering he's filling in for Billy West, like I said, I thought he did a really good job at Shaggy, honestly. Like, I couldn't tell much of a difference between, you know, the voice work in Shaggy and Zombie Island and then Shaggy here. It sounds pretty much the same to me. Well, it actually does sound the same to me, and it's very impressive voice work. And as Scooby, obviously, he does a really, really terrific job. The way he captures Scooby's mannerisms and his rah, 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 with the R's, stuff like that always impresses me. Mary Kay Bergman also does a really good job as Daphne. I thought her voice work was really good as well as Frank Welker as Fred. He always does such a great job as Fred. BJ Ward as Velma is also really good. She does a really good job. And then you have Tim Curry who voices the writer and he does such a great job. But it's no surprise because Tim Curry, he's just so talented. Like he just 
oozes that personality and he definitely injects that personality into this character so he does a great job and everyone else including the hex girls who are in this movie the voice actresses for the hex girls also do a really great job there's some moments that did have me laughing um the opening scene definitely being one of them but easily the funniest moment in this movie and andrew pointed this out too was when Scooby and Shaggy are eating up this restaurant. They are basically eating everything off of the menu and everyone at that restaurant is just looking at them in absolute horror. Like they look traumatized because they cannot believe that Scooby and Shaggy can actually eat that much. And as you know, as far as the characters go, I do still love Scooby and Shaggy. Uh, Velma, I really liked and she served interesting importance to the story. I like what she had to serve here. I also did really like the Hex Girls too, especially with their introduction. I thought their introduction was actually pretty cool and I thought it was very entertaining. And I already pointed out the climax when it comes to like stuff like the turkey and the pumpkins and all that. Like there were some stuff in the climax I definitely got some enjoyment out of. Unfortunately, even though this does have really good things going for it, my biggest problem with this movie, as much as I did want to enjoy it more, is how rushed it is. This is a very, very, and I am talking a very rushed movie. And I know with a lot of these Scooby-Doo directed DVD movies, well, I should say all of them really, they're all really short. but. It's definitely a matter of how you use the runtime. Like Scooby Doo and Zombie Island, that one was roughly an hour and 17 minutes, but I thought that used its runtime really well. Witch's Ghost is a lot shorter, actually, than Zombie Island. It's literally about 10 minutes shorter than Zombie Island. Unfortunately, because this is one hour and six minutes or seven minutes or somewhere around there, um, it did hurt this movie from feeling more fleshed out because this movie does have a lot of really good ideas and I do like what we see in Oak Haven, Massachusetts. I did like a lot of stuff that the movie was showing and I did see a lot of potential. After the opening scene, once we meet this rider, we're already in Massachusetts. Like this is a movie that jumps back and forth forth um, to certain scenes. I just wish that it was a little bit longer so it didn't have to feel as rushed. It's definitely the biggest distraction for me personally. It's also surprising to say this and I'm glad I'm not the only person that thought this because Andrew also said this too but Fred and Daphne are surprisingly put to the side in this movie and it's weird because we follow this gang and we see them go out and solve these mysteries like they're supposed to resolve everything as a gang um and Velma definitely has stuff to do Shaggy and Scooby you know they have their importance too but Fred and Daphne they don't really have anything to do not to mention that I thought Fred and Daphne's interactions were just kind of lame to be honest some of the usual Fred and Daphne stuff and it can work definitely sometimes but in the case of this movie it doesn't really work and when you watch these Scooby-Doo movies uh, you want to enjoy the mystery and even if you could see where the mystery is going you, you want to still find yourself intrigued you still want to be fascinated by the mystery. I can't really say that with this movie because this mystery was honestly very predictable. I can't say there was anything remotely interesting when it came to the mystery. I definitely saw potential of how this mystery could have been unpredictable. The minute I saw this character, I literally said, yep, that character is gonna be the bad guy when we get to the climax. And when we get to that final reveal in the climax, I literally rolled my eyes because it was something I knew was gonna happen before the movie even reached that point. So it was one of those eye rolling moments in my opinion. There was nothing unpredictable about that final reveal at all. I knew that was coming. And whatever else this movie tried to do to make things quote unquote unpredictable, it didn't work. And like I said, even if I could see where certain things are coming, I wanna be at least intrigued by the mystery. 
that's not the case with Witch's Ghost, and I definitely thought that was a missed opportunity on the movie's part. And then as much as I did enjoy the Hex Girls, and I could see why the movie included the Hex Girls here, I did feel that they were underutilized, to be honest. Like, they definitely did have a point of being in this movie, but... I just don't think the movie really used them to their full advantage, to be honest. I do want to say I do like the idea of the gang thinking that they're witches. I actually think that's a funny idea. But it's like with everything else in the movie, whatever good ideas they have in here, they're just not really explored enough. And as much as I did enjoy parts of the climax because of its creativity, other parts of the climax I just couldn't really get behind. And it just wasn't very interesting. And it's really rushed. It just doesn't fool come together by the end. Overall, Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost on a rewatch, it's disappointing. I was expecting more from this movie. It definitely has its enjoyable moments. There's definitely some funny moments, especially really involving Shaggy and a Scooby for sure, but there's a lot of things that just aren't fleshed out enough. It's a very rushed movie. It's definitely never a boring movie for sure, but it is a very rushed movie. Fred and Daphne surprisingly do not have anything to do, really, to be honest. It really didn't hold up for me. I'm going to give Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost two and a half out of four stars. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. And once again, I do want to say happy 50th anniversary to Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo has definitely been a big part of my childhood. One of the things that I just adored growing up with, and I still do really like him and the overall world to this day. So the fact that he's 50 years old is crazy. And of course, I couldn't be happier celebrating it with Andrew, which you should check out Andrew Hayes' channel. He's a very cool dude. He has a very great channel. Uh, he does movie reviews and wrestling content and all that good stuff on his channel. So if you do want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description down below. Thank you so much everyone for watching. This is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Taka Pow Whoa.